Hey guys, welcome. I'm Amanda Devon and I'm a professional makeup artist. And one of my number one asked questions by my clients is, how do you get my makeup so flawless lasting all day? So I wanted to give you guys an in-depth tutorial of how to do that. I've made tons of tutorials doing makeup on myself. And this is honestly the same steps that I do on myself that I do on my clients. I just adjust depending on their skin needs and type. But I figured being a little bit more thorough really showing you guys the how and why of what I'm doing should help you at home get that professional look. So if you're looking for flawless makeup that lasts all day, let's get into it. So I already went ahead and did my eyes. We're gonna be focusing on complexion today, but eyes are important too, so I am gonna tell you what I used. When it comes to the eyes and longevity for your eyeshadow, it's pretty simple. A primer and using high quality eyeshadows. Majority of the time, I just use a concealer to prime my eyes and that works really well. There's all different types of concealers out on the market, so depending on your skin type, just adjust to the concealer that you're using. And then just make sure you're using high quality eyeshadows. Drugstore or high end, as long as they have that long wearability, the blendability, the pigment, and you're pairing it with a primer, you're set. For today's look, I used two of my absolute favorite palettes, the Supreme Nudes by Artist Couture, and the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes. They are amazing. So now let's focus on the complexion because I feel like that is where a lot of people struggle with. Definitely the quality of the products that you're using and the quality of the tools that you're using do make a huge difference. But one of the biggest differences that can make when it comes to makeup is your skin. Makeup is only as good as the skin underneath it. So if you are not taking care of your skin and prepping it to your skincare needs, no matter what you do, no matter what products that you use, makeup just isn't gonna look that great or last that long. And to be honest, a lot of the times I might skip my priming step because I already had a really good skincare prep. Sometimes just using a lightweight moisturizer will do the trick for any skin type. I already applied my skincare a couple hours ago, but I do wanna revive it before we start adding products to the skin. So we are just gonna add a little bit of a nice lightweight moisturizer. Again, depending on your skin type, whether you're dry, normal, oily combination, you really need to make sure that you're catering your needs to that skin type for the help of the longevity of anything that you're putting on your face. I have very normal skin, it can lead to dry, so I always really overly hydrate my skin. And that's why right now it still has that sheen because of all the products that I put on earlier. Now, if you're in my skin type category, adding a little bit of extra hydration isn't gonna hurt you. And I'm gonna be going in with my hydration cream by Refer. This is a honestly picture perfect product to use for all skin types. I've used this on clients that are super dry, oily, normal combination, and it works well with everybody. I just take a little amount like that, get it mixed up in my hands, focus in the T-zone, and blend out. Say you already do these things and you feel like your makeup still doesn't stick, a really great primer that's good for that is this Milk Hydro Grip. It's moisturizing, it's lightweight, but it has a slight tackiness, so anything that you put on it is gonna stick right to it. As we move on through the complexion steps, you're gonna notice that less is more. I don't need to use a moisturizer and then this on top. One or the other is gonna work well for me. Again, since I already prepped my skin with the skincare that I had from earlier, this just nice lightweight helps to just boost the hydration back so then we can start with the other products. And just to reiterate, because this video is gonna be a lot of that, no matter if you're dry, normal, oily, or combination, make sure you're prepping your skin to those needs. If you're drier, use something a little bit thicker that's going to help soak into the skin. If you're more normal combination, the product that I use is wonderful. And if you're more oily, use something a little bit lighter of a base. And you can also go in with a primer that does have a slight mattifying effect and just use it right in the center of the face, your T-zone. For foundation, you definitely wanna pick something that is long wearing, but I feel like nowadays everything is labeled long wearing. So when it comes to that, again, depending on your skin type, it's all about trial and error finding a product, trying it out, and seeing how it wears with your skin. One of my current favorites is the Light Reflecting by NARS. This is a very, very long wearing foundation and it looks amazing on so many different skin types. Honestly, even on the oiliest of client, as long as you're setting this the right way. It just has a really nice sheen to it, which no matter what skin type you have, you do want that beautiful sheen because it helps to make your skin look like skin. So I have two shades in this foundation. I love it so much. So when I'm tan and when I'm a little bit lighter, right now I'm kind of like in between. I'm not freshly self tanned, but I'm not my lightest. So I might mix them both. This is medium one and this one is light two. I feel like I might be able to get away with the medium one. We can adjust if not, 
So we're gonna go in with this first and I'm going to do one pump. And I wanna show you what one pump looks like. I feel like it's a big misconception even when you're doing a full face of makeup that you need a lot. You don't. The way I'm gonna show you how to apply your makeup is all in very small amounts and in layers. When you do it that way, you ensure there's no cakiness, it's nice even finish and coverage. And also I feel like really helps with the longevity as well because there's not so much sitting on your face. I also mentioned the quality of tools being very important as well. Tools help with the overall application and when your application is flawless, the longevity also comes with that as well. So I'm gonna use this foundation brush from Sigma slash was in collab with Brianna Fox. It is my favorite, it is so soft, and you can use this foundation brush for so many things, not just applying your foundation. The shape of it allows you to do concealer if you wanted to, contouring, blush, it's truly amazing. So I just pick up a little bit of the product, and what I actually like to do is start here, avoiding the center of the face. And I'll get to you why we do that. Really just focusing again on the outer perimeters, pushing it along the jawline, and also pushing it into the hairline. So after I blend in that one pump, I did still need a little bit more throughout here. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more. When you start off again with smaller products and in layers, you can ensure that you're using just the right amount of product and not too much. Now I can take a little bit more product and slowly work it into the T-zone, but a little bit at a time. I'm not focusing all of the product here in the T-zone because we're gonna go in with concealer. Concealer ends up being a little bit of a thicker formula with a little bit more coverage, so you don't wanna pile foundation coverage and then concealer coverage. Using the foundation in areas where you need the coverage all over the face, so then you can go in with the concealer and add it in areas where needed. So now out of two pumps, we still have half a pump left. Now this would be really great if you are looking for a little bit more coverage anywhere else. Say you're breaking out along the jawline or the neck, you can go ahead and bring that foundation there or wherever else around the perimeters of the face that you need more coverage. For me, my coverage looks great. It evenly covered my skin. There are little spots where I will want a little bit more coverage, but again, we're gonna go in with the concealer. Now notice that I used a foundation brush to apply my foundation instead of a beauty blender. So how do you know which to use and when to use it? If you're more normal combination oily, I really do feel like you benefit a little bit more with a brush. This is just gonna apply all the product where you need to be. You're not overly using product like you would with a beauty blender. At the end of the day, it is a sponge and it does absorb some of that product. So I really do feel like when you're using this, you're getting the most out of your product. Now, if you're a little bit drier, it is trickier with the brush because when you are dry and you're flaky and you're using this, it kind of emphasizes that texture on the skin. So if you're dry, using a beauty blender is wonderful for that. You will definitely benefit from that little extra bit of hydration. And because you're dry, it's not gonna really affect the amount of product that you're placing on the skin. But don't get me wrong, we will be using both of these interchangeably today but that's just a little bit of extra help if you are struggling with which one to use. Now we're gonna move on to concealing. I don't want my concealer to work as hard, so I'm gonna go in with a color corrector. This one's from Charlotte Tilbury. Love this, this is in the shade Fair. And I'm gonna take a little brush. This is from EcoTools, it's their largest shadow. You can honestly use any brush for anything. This is so great for under the eyes. I like using a brush because it just helps to slightly and lightly deposit the product because you don't need a lot. Too much product under the eyes are going to emphasize any dryness and fine lines that we all have, especially when we have our expressions, all these lines. So in order to avoid that, we wanna use as minimal product as possible. Now it's not a crazy difference, but you can definitely tell that this helped to brighten. So now we can go in with a little less concealer. For concealer, I'm gonna use the Dior Skin Correct. This is in the shade 1N. This is a little bit more hydrating, so really great for my normal to dry skin. Really gonna help to keep that hydrated under the eyes. I actually also use this on my eyes to prime before my shadow. If you are not normal or dry, putting something hydrating like that wouldn't be the best, so stick with something a little bit more mattifying. I'm gonna apply a little product in areas where I do like a little bit more coverage. Since this is more minimal coverage, I'm gonna go in with a brush, and that way it's gonna ensure that I'm gonna deposit mostly to all of the product in this area. And I'm just gonna slightly work it into the skin and everywhere that I just wanted a little extra coverage. Really focusing the coverage in the T-zone is also gonna help 
with the longevity as well. We have so much movement in our faces in this area. And so if you're not applying enough product and in the layers that you're doing, it's going to wear a lot quicker and sooner. And when you're blending out your makeup, take your time. It's not a race. When you're taking your time to make sure everything is blended in the way that it needs to be, that also helps with the longevity of the makeup. Sometimes I like a little extra brightness just right here in the center. So I'm gonna go in with a lighter concealer and this is from NARS, their Creamy Radiant Concealer. Also a love of mine. And I'm just gonna apply it right there. This step I'm actually gonna use a smaller brush, the one that we use to correct and I'm just going to really push this and apply it right where I need it. Now that we have the foundation, concealer, everything covered the way we need, we're gonna go into contouring. I'm gonna use this Charlotte Tilbury one. This is in the shade medium, absolutely love this. And I'm gonna use our foundation brush that we used earlier. Just so that you can see, you don't have to have a million brushes, just the right ones. So again, a little product goes a long way and we're gonna work it in the areas where we want to contour. I wanna get down all the cream products before we go in with our powder. Mixing powders and creams together also helps with the longevity of the wear like tremendously. The cream gives the powder something to stick onto and kind of help to give it another dimension of really brought from within. And the cream underneath the powder really helps again to keep that skin-like finish that we're going for. I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush so that I can put a little bit down the nose as well. Now a little tip if you're using a contour stick instead of a compact like this, I wouldn't recommend taking the stick and applying it everywhere and then blending out. The reason being, sometimes you can be applying too much product when you don't need to. So all I would suggest for that is taking your foundation brush or whatever brush that you use for contouring and you're just going to do this and apply it just the same way that I did with this. Again, that way you're ensuring that you're using the correct amount of product without overusing too much. But don't get me wrong, if you want more product than I applied, do that layer first take a look to see if you want to add a little bit more and then add. Still in with the cream products, we're going to use blush. This is from e.l.f. It's their putty blush. And I think this one is Turks and Caicos. It is. Same foundation brush and contour brush that we used. If you have like a towel or something near you where you can kind of just like lightly brush it off, then you can go ahead and with the blush. I'm just going to apply a little bit in here and then blend it into the contour. Now that we have all of our creams and liquids applied, we can go ahead and with setting our face. Again, this is gonna look different depending if you're dry, normal, oily, or combination. So I'm gonna give you a little tips and tricks depending on which one you are. But first, before we set, I'm just gonna go back in and make sure everything is blended, especially along the eyes from the creasing from talking. We're gonna make sure that they are gone before we put powder. There is no product on this brush. I'm just going in and pushing and pressing to make sure everything is blended. If you're somebody who's dry, this is the perfect opportunity to take the beauty blender and really push it into the skin. Powder, if you're dry, normal, and combination, love the RCMA No Color Powder. It's super finely milled, so it's not gonna look drying or cakey in any areas that you put it. What I like to do is take a brush with a little bit of powder, mix it into my hand, and we're gonna do a first set. We're gonna do a couple different sets and I'm gonna tell you why. So the first set is just to lightly absorb that cream product and help to put down the shine. Now, if you're super dry, this is honestly all the setting that you will need when it comes to the powder. For my normal combination and oily skin types, if you want this to last even longer, you're gonna take a powder puff now and same thing, kind of push that powder from your hand into this puff and then I'm going to push, not swipe, push this into my skin. This is helping to sandwich this and give it a top coat basically. I kind of like that analogy, like a top coat to your nail polish. This is just like sealing in all the work that you did. And I haven't added any more powder. It's still all in the puff. And I'm just focusing in the T-zone. Now if you're oily, same thing. I would just use a little bit more of a thicker, heavier powder, something that's a little bit more mattifying like the Laura Mercier. Now that we have this kind of double set if you really want your makeup to last all day and i mean like 12 hours and say you're somebody like me who has allergies and i'm constantly kind of doing one of these i'm always a hot mess with my allergies i'm going to take a little bit more powder and leave a little bit visible so that it kind of adds this baking technique my chin needs a little bit of that too i don't know what i'd be doing i think i do a lot of this 
don't do that. But if you do and you're somebody like me, add that to the chin as well. Now that was just for the T-zone. We still need to set the rest of the face. If you're dry, you probably won't need to do this, but normal combination oily. Go ahead and with a nice setting powder, something super soft and light, like my Charlotte Tilbury, love this stuff. This is in shade two, I also have shade one. And you're just gonna take a little bit and dust it everywhere else. I'm not really pushing this into my skin, I'm just lightly dusting it. If you were oily, I probably would use a little bit of a smaller brush and really push that into the skin. You can also use that Laura Mercier powder that I was talking about, really push it into the skin as well. But as for my dry girlies, don't do that. We don't wanna look like the desert. Now that we have a nice light setting, we have some bakage going on right here. I'm gonna go in with my powder bronzer. All about layers. This seems like so many steps, but we're using small amount of products to just sandwich them all together to give that 12, 24 hour longevity. One of my absolute favorite affordable bronzers is the Physician's Formula. This is in the shade bronzer. I'm not a fan of how it smells because I'm not like a coconut person, but the way this looks on your skin looks like second skin. It's just gorgeous. This also has a slight, very, very, very slight, but a slight luminosity to it. So when you're applying it, it just helps to look like skin. Someone who is dry, normal to combination will absolutely love this. If you are more on the oily, I would definitely suggest just sticking with a pure matte bronzer because eventually your oils will come through naturally as they should, and that will give the sheen to your makeup. I do want a little extra bronze, so I'm gonna go in with this Hourglass bronzer. This is their Radiant Bronze. It's got a little bit more glow to it. I love that glow. If you're somebody who doesn't, probably avoid this. They also have other kinds that don't have the glow, but I love the glow. I'm just gonna focus this right in the hollows and along the hairline. For blush, I feel like it's one of those things that it just, no matter what you do, tends to want to leave the first, the first sign of makeup leaving. It's, a, it's really annoying. But I have found with these Dior blushes, these will literally last all day. So it really does for me come down to the formula. These are a little bit more on the pricey side. I think these are $40 each. Like, yes, that's pricey, but these last all day. So I have the coral and the pink, and I'm just gonna mix them both and apply it. I'm using the Morphe V106. These new brush line, this V line that they came out with, really, really like it. You're looking for something that is affordable and quality. I'm a big fan. I do want a hint of just a slightly, just a little bit more pink. This Kylie blush in Pink Power. I'm just gonna add this right here. Now we've had this powder baking, so I'm just going to blend this in. You wanna do a mixture of patting and slight swiping. I wouldn't really swipe because you're going to disrupt the makeup, especially if you are drier, do not swipe. You wanna pat. If you are drier, again, this is where the Beauty Blender comes into play. I used a brush and a powder puff to apply my powders, but you can use the Beauty Blender and you can really push that into the skin and that also helps to add that little bit of hydration that we were talking about. But for me, with me being a little bit more normal and sometimes could be combination if the weather is super humid, I'm gonna avoid the beauty blender for that reason. I feel like there's a lot of rules when it comes to, depending on your skin type, so I totally understand if it's very overwhelming. And if you would like a separate video for each skin type and what you should do, I can definitely do that because I kind of mixed all of them in together. Now, for those of you who are oily, this is where you're gonna set just a little bit more. You're gonna take whatever powder that you're using, again, highly suggest the Laura Mercier. You're gonna dip a powder puff or the Beauty Blender or a brush, totally up to you, and you're going to sit and apply that powder right underneath that blush and contour, and you're gonna bake in that area. For me, I don't, personally need that because I'm more that drier normal. So what I like to do is take that Charlotte powder that I was talking about. This again for normal to combination skin. I'm gonna go in with the brush. This is in shade one. And I'm just gonna apply it right underneath. This is giving that little extra set and helps to carve out the cheekbone just a little bit more. One of the last powders that I will be using is a highlight. 
This one from Charlotte Tilbury in the Film Star Bronze and Glow is seriously great for all skin types. It's such a finely milled highlighter. It looks like you're glowing from within. If you're oily, I would really avoid those super stark highlighter, you know what I'm talking about, the ones that just look like a beaming stripe. I'd stay away from that. And if you're dry, depending on how dry you are, I would go in with a liquid highlighter. But I just find this highlighter to be so flattering on all skin types. And I'm gonna take this Morphe 510 brush and really apply. I, I love to glow, so I'm just gonna focus it right here on the higher point of the, of the face. And then I like to bring it down the whole nose. This is really great for dry, normal combination. If you're oily, I would avoid the whole nose, maybe just a little bit on the tip. Now the very, very last step that you need to do in securing this and making sure that it lasts all day is a setting spray. You're probably thinking like, we've already done powders, why are we doing this more? It's the layer system that I'm telling you about. Using these layers with creams and powders, strategically placing them where they need to be, and then setting them with like hairspray for your face, if you really think about it. Another top coat, this is gonna seal everything in. Now they make sprays for all different skin types. This one from Charlotte, great for all dry, normal, oily combination. Makeup Forever, really good for dry to normal. I also have the Morphe setting spray. It's not here on my desk, but if you know about it, that is super great for oily skin too. It's great for all skin types, but especially if you're oily, you'll love that. Today I'm not feeling dry. I'm feeling pretty normal, so I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte. And this is the magic. I'm gonna take my fan. I love the fan, it's my favorite part. Just wanna fan it down, you don't want a wet face. Unless you're dry, you'll probably really like that feeling. I like that feeling, but most people don't. Now for my normal combination and oily skin types, after you set the face with the spray, you can go in with your powder puff and lightly just press in the T-zone. That's it, no extra product on the, on the powder puff, but just pressing that product into the skin and by product I mean the spray. Now I'm gonna finish my lips and brows off camera and I will show you up close how this makeup looks. Now I got you guys zoomed up really close because I want you to see what my skin looks like. No filters, no anything. I'm in natural daylight with a little bit of light so that you can see me because it's kind of cloudy. But this is what your skin will look like. Now I did just apply it and so in about 20 to 30 minutes my skin's really gonna absorb this and make it look even more wonderful. And this is gonna look great inside, outside, in photos, and seriously last all day. I'm not kidding when I say I have clients who sometimes have back-to-back -back events and I'll do their makeup on a Friday and they're still wearing it for their Saturday event. Not kidding. Now as a licensed esthetician, do I recommend it? No. Have I done it? Absolutely, and it's <laughs> done it so many times and it probably won't be my last. Now this was a lot of steps, so I totally understand if this isn't something that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you're looking for a night out or you're attending some type of event and you wanna look your absolute best, I promise you follow these steps and you will. Allow yourself 45 minutes to an hour and just sit, relax, take it all in, enjoy the process, and everybody's gonna be asking you, what you're wearing, where did you get your makeup done? And you're gonna be like, I did it. I did it, thank you. But I really hope you found these tips and tricks to be helpful and let me know if you give them a try. I can also make a video on products that are specific towards each skin type. So if that's something that you're interested in, please let me know as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to see more, follow me on Instagram. My name is Amanda Devon on there. We're a little bit more chit chatty. You can also head to my website, amandadevon.com and you'll see all the amazing work I've done thus far. But I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all the next one. Bye.